several years ago as an undergraduate at the university. I wrote an article titled The Downside of ASU Strike, highlighting the economic implications of industrial action by the academic union on business communities around university campuses across the country. That article was published on the Daily Trust newspaper. And today, as an employee of Trust TV, I am about to talk about the same subject with a relatively similar slant, an indication of how much of an age-long discussion industrial action by ASU has been. According to data, Nigerian lecturers have gone on strike at least 15 times since 1999, accounting for cumulative of 50 months. This means that for every five years, Nigerian universities have spent one year on strike, an entire academic session wasted for every student on the average. In 2009, the academic union, after months of strike action, signed an MOU with the federal government on some of the following reasons. Upholding universities' autonomy and better teachers' welfare, release of the report of visitation panels to federal universities, review of salary, revitalization of federal and state universities, payment of earned allowance and promotion arrears. The release of over 1 trillion naira for the upgrade of tertiary institutions and more recently, the demand for University Transparency Accountability Solution, UTAS, as replacement for the Integrated Payroll and Personnel Information System, IPPIS. At the center of these demands, however, is the question of funding for Nigerian tertiary institutions, which has resulted in the lack of total implementation of some of the agreements with the government and the consequent epileptic nature of learning in public universities. While some analysts argue about the inability of government to meet ASU's demand due to lack of funds, others believe it is purely a case of misplaced priori priority. Are there funding gaps in Nigeria's public universities and how can it be fixed permanently? This will be our issue of focus today. Thank you for joining us. I am Ayubelia. Now in the studio to discuss this with me is Professor Kamal Bello from the National Open University. Thank you for joining us on Issues This Thank Hour. You. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. All right. Now, first of all, uh, it's been from one strike to another for, for years now, you know, with ASU. Currently, they are on this one-month warning strike. Uh, how would you respond to the epileptic nature or this back and forth between federal government and ASU. One moment there's an agreement, the next moment someone is failing to meet up with the agreement and then they go back on strike. <clears throat> Once again, thank you very much for extending this invitation to me. Uh, I will seek the indulgence of the UD Hanko that I will speak as an individual, as a Nigerian. I will not speak as a professor of politics and administration. I will not speak as ASU member, because if I speak as ASU member, I will be speaking a luta continua, mm -hmm. that the struggle continues, the salary must increase, mm -hmm. because if the salary comes, it will get into my post as well. Sure. So I will speak generally as an individual, as a Nigerian. Uh, incessant strike is not the best, to be frank. Why? It's affecting the system. It's affecting our product. Five years, you go on strike for one year. Some parents who are well-to-do, we take their children, their awards to other places, mm -hmm. outside Nigeria, mm -hmm. or to the private universities. Mm -hmm. I remember today, I remember in those days, scholars, students are coming, even from America, from Pakistan, from India to study in Nigeria, from Ghana, from Cameroon, from uh, 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 Gambia. But today, there's no more. We are the one going, mm -hmm. even going as far as Ukraine. And losing money in that process. Yes. It's, when we are talking of, uh, of, 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 of uh, 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 tourism, medical tourism, mm -hmm. we are also doing educational tourism. Yes. I was asking a question yesterday because of this crisis between Ukraine and, and uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. I said, but some of our students, some of our Nigerians, youths, are there in that Thousands, country. actually. They are there <laughs> in great number. Yes. But the question is that, I asked the question, I said, but this, an, this is not an English-speaking country. How did they cope? They said they would teach them communication for one year. Mm -hmm. I said, can communication of one year, 
equip somebody to be able to learn properly? No, that's a big question. And why? The parents, as I said, in the 80s, in the 90s, people are coming all over the world to study in Nigeria because of the standard of Nigeria University. These days, nobody is coming. We are the one going, even going as far as Sudan, to go and be studying. What do you need in Sudan? Sudan is not English speaking. Niger is a French speaking country. Our people are going there to go and study and bring certificates because of this incessant strike. We should look at that critically. It's affecting the system. It's affecting the educational system. It's affecting our economy. It's affecting our growth. Because it's as if we are just producing incompetent graduates. Five years, strike of one year. Students have gotten lost of what they have taught. Apparatus, equipment in the school, is, is becoming obsolete. When you keep it unused for one year, definitely by the time you come back, you have to reinvigorate it before it can work. Mm. So for, as a parent, as a Nigeria, it's a certain strike by us who is not the best. Mm. And I mean, it, by system. implication, if you are to quantify the impact of this, you know, lack of, uh, you know, epileptic nature of our learning process, how will that, you know, uh, how does that really, in practical terms, impact on the kind of product that we see today? A lot of people say, well, we have a lot of Nigerian graduates who cannot. Some even go as far as mocking some uh, you know, uh, graduates, saying they cannot even spell their names or even make a sentence uh, and all of that. So how, how, to what extent does this you know, affect the kind of graduates or the kind of students that we churn out of our tertiary institutions? No, there's no doubt about that. It's affecting our product, to be frank. Because as it's garbage in, garbage out. And it's not only ASUS strike that is causing the depression of the quality of our graduates, a lot of factors. Some people will come from the secondary school with eight, nine credits, A1, nine subjects, in most of these miracle centers. So there's nothing we can do. When you have eight credits, you give you admission. Because the minimum is five credits. Including, including English and mathematics. Somebody came with in, in Wahek, A1 in English, and he cannot speak well. So that's not the problem of us, to be frank. Mm. It's systemic. It's from the primary and secondary school. And the certificate they are bringing to university is questionable. To be frank, it's, that's not ASU problem. Yeah, how be it? But it's Afu, one of the issues. Anyways, ASU may contribute, mm -hmm. but the background of the students who are training at the university is also weak. They don't have a good primary and secondary school. There was a time they were sharing uh, the Prime Minister of Nigeria in the 60s, in the First Republic. Mm -hmm. it's By history, they did not do more than diploma in education. But he can address Congress, even United States Congress. And then they will give him a loud ovation and will be nicknamed the Golden Force of Africa. Mm -hmm. And they were trained in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So if a degree cannot speak well today, and a diploma in those days can speak well. Even the handwriting, if you see the handwriting, you, 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 you appreciate that they have been properly trained. Mm -hmm. So the training has might have contributed, but a lot of problem has started from primary and secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Now, at the, heart of, at the heart of all of this uh, you know, struggle is the issue of funding. Um, I mean, practically, we are by far below the requirements of, you know, of you know, the United Nations and you know, UNESCO and the rest of them as to how much we need to budget you know, to fund our educational sector. Of course, that one is settled. So how can we increase the budgeting and how do we you know, really place the priorities here? We have several other issues competing you know, for attention. Health is on one hand, security on the other hand, and so many other uh, uh, you know, issues to look at. There are two ways to it. Funding is poor. But the management of that funding too is corrupted. If you give 100% of our budget to education in Nigeria, people from top to down, by the time they cut theirs, there will be nothing left. There was a case one time I forgot in the university, even if I remember, I will not mention. There are, no chem there are no chemicals in the laboratory, chemistry laboratory. And the individual vice chancellor was able to go on pilgrimage with the fund of the university. And that was and budgeted entered. for? 
It was, eh? That was budgeted for. The pilgrimage? The, the laboratories. The, 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 the yes, it should have things been. Things that needs. It should have needed. been budgeted for. Mm. But we are seeing how corrupt we are. Do you know there's what we call fire mint? Even the laboratory is budgeted for. We fire those budgets to something that is flimsy. Traveling. Padded traveling, padded allowances, padded per DM, night allowances. Padded one. Now, isn't it for the same issue of corruption that the, the current administration decided to, you know, introduce this IPPIS thing, you know, uh, and on all of it? How is it taking care of the issue of, you know, corruption in our tertiary institution? The whole thing about a single treasury account and, you know, the IPPIS and all that. I'm sorry to see. I say I will speak like a Nigerian citizen. I'm not speaking for government. I'm not speaking against government. But to be frank and candid, when IPPIS was to be introduced, the IPs was to be introduced, they said that they discovered corruption in the system, inflation of payroll. 500 staff in the university, for instance, but the payroll that is coming, the number coming per head is about 700 or 1,000, and the actual is 500. But by the time they said they are introducing IP, IP, IPPIS, some of these chief executives, they started employing people to cover up what they were collecting before. Because they told them that this IPPIS, when it comes, you can't increase any staff again. Because the pool at the center will be the one to be paying directly. So they, they overemployed. And even more than what they had before. If our government, I would have left them, the 500 that they had, and they are increasing to 700 or 1,000, it will have been okay. I mean, but, but, now, the, but corruption will continue, isn't it? But now, they have corrupted it again, I'm telling you. The 700 or 1,000 they are collecting, it has doubled to 2,000. The last interview of the president, the commander-in-chief, he said it. He said some people have illegally employed people into the payroll. We are going to deal with them. Something some of us have seen more than three years when they started IPPIS. That they are overloading this thing. So the, the IPPIS payroll. thing is not working? In it's the, not working the way they, was, they think it will call corruption. A place where they are collecting salary for 1,000 staff before, they are collecting 1,500 or, 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 or 2,000 staff through IPPIs. I'm telling you, the shout that IP, I mean, also is talking that some of the staff are not being paid. Are you with me? Yes. Sir. That some staff are not being paid, they are hold for some years, either one year to 12 months, and so on and so forth. It's because the payroll had been overblown. What they budgeted for IPPIs is no more enough to pay the staff. Some staff are not paid. So that's a self-inflicted problem, isn't it? It is. It is. So why are they now kicking against the IPPIs thing? And this U-Tans that they, the ASU is advocating for, is it a solution to the problem? What we are saying now, why is it a solution? Is that some lecturer may live, some lecturer may die. Are you getting it? Or some staff of the university. We Utas will be able to bring in more lecturers. But well, IPPS is difficult. You have to do capturing. Some people capture for more than one year now, some six months. Their, their salary has not come, has not been coming. You can change university. But today now, if you change university, particularly at the federal level, your salary may not come in the next six months. Before, you can be doing visiting. Most of our universities are not having enough hands at the upper level. So some professors have to move to assist. Where does Fekum? But if you move today, six months, your salary will not come. Because the IPPIs, we need capturing you. We need you to, to, to take it to the Accountant General's office, the table for IPPIs, take it to Accountant General, take it to Ministry of Finance, if not Central Bank. So the process and the way things are going, if you want to be realistic, the money is not there the way it used to be. The budgeted that this is for salary, overhead. And then they are bringing more. So then they should in disengage some of those more people that they brought so that it's, the salary can take care of the people that are captured in the IPPIs, isn't it? Thank you very much. Those who are captured in the IPPIs initially, they are taking their salary. But those who came later, for instance, you know, somebody wants to move from one university to another, maybe through advert. 
that oh, there's a vacancy. You are applied, you are qualified, and you are employed. They will not tell you that you must capture. Happiness must capture you. In the process of capturing, you will take six months or more before the salary will come in to be paid. What I want us to know as a Nigerian is that in everything that is happening in Nigeria, there's a network, a cartel, a cabal. And they're everywhere. In the university, in the Accountant General's office, in the Auditor General's office, in the Ministry of Finance, in the Central Bank. They are working hand in hand. It's like rob my back and rob your back. Bring one candidate, we put it there. I will bring my own candidate. So five candidates come. Somebody will be pushing it for you because he has his own candidate there. It's a network. Mm -hmm. And so in other words, there's nothing wrong with IPPIS. There's nothing wrong with it. What is wrong is the management or administration of that system. What, that is one. There's no system that enter Nigeria that will not corrupt. They corrupted it. And what also is saying is that IPPIS will not be able to capture movement of staff, so of it's, lecturer. It's not flexible. It's not, it's not capturing the movement of lecturer. You want to go for visiting, it will not capture so it. If this IPPIS is to be made more flexible, well, us will be okay with it. You know, this is a technology, and it's a software program. If you are close to the, those who are doing software, they will tell you that what they told them is to accommodate this, accommodate that. Apart from that, it can't accommodate anything. It's a programmed where, software. It can't accommodate. Because they are using the same software for those of them in the Ministry of Education, for those of them in Federal Government College, the military, the Air Force, the police, using the same thing, the same platform. You know, that was a time so that was So why, why is the academia different? Why is, why is ASU or university, that's what, that's, why is it different? That's I mean, what I'm why saying. can't the same system be used? That's why? what I'm saying. For example, now if you're in the ministry now, employed as a civil servant, you may be there throughout your career until you retire 60 years or 35 years as applicable. But in the university system, more universities are coming up. Somebody may be in a state university or private. If you see a federal university, you want to move. Somebody may be in a federal, you want to move to state. Somebody may be in a federal or state, you want to move to private. All right, now with so, this UTAS, can UTAS take care of these challenges and at the same time ensure that corruption is not thriving in our tertiary institutions? UTAS will take care of movement of lecturers. You want to go on sabbatica? You want to go on visiting? It will take care. Are you getting it? The fear of government was that some, of, some professors are doing visiting in three, four, five places. Exactly. So their production, their productivity is low. Where they are, they are, they are not, not performing. Effective. They are not effective. Where they are going, they are not effective. So if it is, me, I agree, if it is packed, don't do more than one federal. If another state is having vacancy, go to the state. If private is having, but how can you be doing visiting in three federal universities and including states, four, private, five? You can't give the best. Yeah. It's because of our life. I didn't mean we capture our life properly. People will know where you are moving. They will know where you are. Mm -hmm. If you move in some countries, somebody was telling me, was it in uh, Ghana? They said national ID card in Ghana is like a passport. You can enter any country with it. So, so in other words, the issue of transparency here is a major issue. It is. It is. All right. Now, um, there are those who have made the argument that, I mean, government cannot meet the demands of ASU in terms of the finances and that government does not have that kind of funds, you know, to sink into just, you know, tertiary institutions, that there are so many other issues to deal with. How would you respond to that? Uh, government should come out and tell the whole world, including ASU, your demand is beyond our financial capacity. They have not. They are signing agreement, and you are going by, you cannot meet it. Well, ASU accept that stand. If government says, we cannot, if, if, I mean, provide all of this. You are the one that said, some people are thinking that government has no enough. Where do we get that government has enough? It's not government that's telling people, or those who are working with government, now, know that government does not have the financial capacity to take care of ASU demands. Why can't federal government come out and tell the old world 
Your demand is more than my financial capacity. If they do not agree, it's a different thing. But you agree with... Yeah, but, but so maybe the government on its part is trying to save students having to stay at home for years, you know, and so it will just play along and say, oh, okay, we are going to grant what you are requesting. Please just go back to the classes. Within, within 10 years or so, you are losing five years in the name of politics of, I don't want students to suffer. You agree, we come back. After some six months, one year, we go again. It's better, let's face the reality. We are all Nigerians. Secondly, secondly, it is difficult for any reasonable person to believe that government has no fund. Why do I say this? Every day we are hearing establishment of universities. Every day we are hearing establishment of polytechnics. Every day we are hearing establishment of more colleges of education. You don't have money and you're establishing more. The one on the ground, you have not funded it properly because of lack of fund. So what rationality is there? Even you will see some now, they will tell you, say, so, 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 Polytechnic has been converted to university. So, 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 Poly College of Education has been converted to university daily. Again, that's the problem. So, that's the well, problem so, from government. So, so, when government is taking decisions as to creating some of these universities, is there any kind of input from, say, ASU, for instance, no. as to whether or not we can manage these no. institutions? And that should have been one of the clauses ASU should have fought for. That, ha. What is wrong? We have not funded the one we have here establishing more. It should be one of the cardinal requests of ASU during negotiation that stop establishing university when you cannot fund. And let them be shouting. Parents, the whole com world community, they will support them. But that is missing in ASU demand. Now, if you look at an organization such as TED Fund, for instance, yes. Tertiary Education Trust Fund, uh, quite a lot of projects you know if you go around to the universities a lot of things done by uh, you know TED fund you know lecturers training scholarship abroad and all that and all that are you saying that that's not enough you know in terms of what we need for the infrastructural development of our tertiary institutions let's be frank with ourselves was it in 1996 the issue of TED fund came during about a time when they were negotiating with Hasu. Hasu suggested that uh, there are a lot of ways you can make money. Why can't you tax these companies? You know, initially it's called ETF, Education Tax Fund. They added primary school, secondary school at that time. It was later they changed it to tertiary institution, TED Fund, Fund. But if you look at the way the money has been, the money is there in billions. But the way it's been managed is also questionable. I'm sorry to use that word. Hasu initiated this. Why can't we make it that, since Hasu is the one that is having a problem of funding, why can't the old fund go to Hasu? Would that be justifiable? Initially, initially they, they, they extended it to primary and secondary school. They changed the act, the decree. They amended no, the but, decree. But as it is right now, it's yeah. tertiary are you, institutions, are you with strictly. Me? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. I said initially, it's called ETF, Education Trust Fund, for primary, secondary, the College of Education, Polytechnic, and University. It's when they look at the fund that it cannot be okay, cannot go around. They now made an amendment to the decree, to the act, and make it that it's strictly for tertiary education. Why can't we now go further and amend that law and say strictly for university? Then what happens to the polytechnics? I mean, are they not part of the tertiary institutions? What happened to the primary and secondary school that were there initially? We have universal basic uh, education. They should that's create. They should, back. They, they should create. We have that. They yeah. should create for them. Because most of the protectors and colleges of education, they are not shouting the way out of shouting. About I mean, we have ASUP, who is also almost like waiting. Anytime ASU embarks on strike, you mm. hear ASU also threatening, you know, to go on its own strike as well. So it's like it may not be. a sister kind of an may, no, we, a, a, a organization. Understand the genesis. Yes. ASU is the one that suggested this fund. Education tax fund. It's solely suggested by Hasu. When the Abacha government told them that, how can we fund? He said, there are a lot of ways you can fund the education. This is a way. Now, for instance, I'm sorry, although this year the TED fund has tried to take caution that they are only sponsoring sciences. 
uh, how can you sponsor somebody to go and study language in uh, outside the country with a huge fund? How can you sponsor somebody to go and study education? Admin, psychology, highly child education. Although they have amended it, that strictly it should be for science and technology courses. But the way they were doing it before, it's too open. It's too bogus. Everybody wants to study, you just send them. It's not part of infrastructure. We, are, we have a university in Nigeria that was established in 1940s. University of Ibada was established around 48. And up to now, it cannot take care of our postgraduate needs unless we send out. We should ask the question, what is the problem? If it is fund, we fund a university that is specially for certain area of academia. So, so you are advocating that a body such as that fund should be limited to just universities? No, I'm, only, I'm, only, I'm only suggesting that, in, I mean, where we are now, I'm only trying to trace the history, the genesis. It was initially for all sectors of education. When they saw that the fund is, too, is spreading too much, they restricted to tertiary education. I'm suggesting that if possible, let amend the law so that it will be strictly for the university system. Will that solve the problem? No, at least when they're talking of fund. They said, you have started that. Federal government said they don't have enough fund. I'm sorry to digress. Do you know some state universities are not taking the salary that the federal universities are taking? We have problem again in the state universities. Different from the one federal, federal universities are fighting. All right, now... The money that has initially been agreed upon uh, to be released by federal government over one trillion naira. There's also a problem of sharing, yes. you know, in the tertiary institutions. Why do we have that problem? It must happen. You know, this is a, this is a country, Nigeria, it's a country where everybody is greedy and looking at self. Because the work a, a, a non-teaching staff is performing in the university is different from what the academic staff are performing. Let's be frank. The work schedule is different. How can you now compete as a non-teaching that you want to take the same salary, the same condition? Like a friend said when I went to Federal University some years ago, Federal University Duse in Jigawa, he said, you see me as a professor. My wife that is in College of Education in Kano, Federal College of Education in Kano, the take -home, our take-home pay is more than that of me of a professor. A friend was saying that. He's a professor in the university. And the wife is a chief lecturer in the College of Education. But the take home is greater than, is bigger than what he is taking. So which means that there are some things that we are doing in Nigeria that we cannot even explain. Do you know before you come, for you to become a chief lecturer in the College of Education or Polytechnic, you need only a second degree. If you have masters, you become chief. And then your take home now is more than that of a professor that need a third degree. I need some publications. As a chief lecturer in the College of Education, if you are in the university, you can't go beyond lecturer one. With, because without PhD, you can't be a senior lecturer. And their take home is more than. All right. Well, we'll come back to this <laughs> so those are uh, again. Issues. Yes, we'll take a quick break now. And then when we come back, we'll continue our discussion on the program. Please stay with us.
Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. For more news, follow us across all our social media platforms. The nightmare that most of these Pipe residents have dreaded for many years is finally happening. The place is a skeleton of itself, a place that was once busy with patients tripping in and out. I'm standing right now. I'm standing on top of the Maloney Hill in the ancient city of Kefi. <laughs> Uh, corporation. I have I know communities where they are contributing when? to buy locally manufactured guns to defend themselves. Being a Nigerian entrepreneur, and I am going to be taking you on a journey to show you the beautiful, the motivational, and resilient nature of Nigerian entrepreneurs. Behind me is the Arewa Textile Mill, established in 1963 and eventually closed down in 2004. We are still going into uh, some other hideouts to see if any apprehensions will be made tonight. Let's travel down to Sheikau, a community in Yobe State, to talk to Sheikau's mother on what she thinks about this development. Well, trust from city even to, city. to be a magistrate is a funny thing. Yes. Have things changed? Is there more corruption now in the judiciary? What can we do about it? Well, this is one of the internally displaced camps here in Busau, the Zamfara State's capital. All right, thank you for staying. And if you're just joining, you're watching Issues on Trust Television. And here we are talking about alternative funding for Nigeria's tertiary institutions. I have in the studio Professor Kamal Bello from the National Open University of Nigeria talking to us about this and giving us more perspectives. Now, uh, I mean, a lot of people say, I mean, we have tertiary institutions all over the world doing great things. And you rarely would hear these issues you know, of, you know, incessant strike actions and all of that. Uh, in terms of funding, what are other models that Nigeria can adopt, you know, to help with this issue of funding in our tertiary uh, institutions, especially if you look at the, you know, this gap between research and development? Well, I think basically, most of the developed countries, most of the universities are not public universities. Is it a private? Mostly. You will hear of one university in Nigeria that is a bit uh, popular, this Nile University. Nigerian Turkish Nile University before, mm. now Nile University. It's owned by a private individual. Gulen has it. And it has branches all over the world. In Germany it has, in Turkish it has. But the problem we have in Nigeria is that uh, our research, the, most of those institutions depend on, mainly on research. Not school fees? Not school, not, not government funding. Research in the sense that if they have, if they can showcase their intellectual property, industry will like to go come in and buy it, pay for it. By the time they take it to their industry, they multiply it and make money. Because intellectual property is very for a key. Because what are we doing in the university? Intellectual activities. Nigeria today, even we don't have any industry producing ordinary toothpick as people are making just of us. Yeah, so is that not part of the problem? I mean, maybe if we have had institutions that are research grounded or oriented, maybe we should we would be able to even attract some of these investments. Definitely. But I'm sorry to digress again. Most of our, when we were young, when we hear polytechnics, or then College of Technology, you are going there purely from the technical school so that you go and use your brain and hand to do some things. Today, you'll be hearing that NUC or MBT said they should open what we call entrepreneurship centers so that people can learn how to use their hand. In a polytechnic, 
in a, in a institution of technology, a college of technology, in university of technology and agri, what do you need entrepreneurship to be taught? It is their main work, entrepreneurship. How to use their hand to make some things. Gradually, gradually, we have killed even our technology departments. Students are not coming there. The, 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 the activities of the university is treated towards humanities. How can you be hearing that a Polytechnic or College of Technology or University of Technology or Agric is running a business technology, accounting technology, BNG in accounting? It doesn't, it doesn't make. And that's where the students are, management, humanities. They want school fees. That's why all of them are rushing. They neglected the technology, the science and technology. Our problem is complex. It's too complex. How do we develop research? When the School of Technology, University of Technology, University of Agriculture, some people are even agitating that convert our University of Technology to conventional university mm -hmm. so that we can be doing accounting business and uh, law and uh, public administration. Yes. I mean, so, we need all of those fields, isn't it? We need all of those fields. But not in the University of Technology. Uh, of life. Yes. So, yes. Uh, but how best can we maximize what we have? I mean, we have some of these University of Technologies across the country. How best can we make them to do what they are designed to do? The, 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 the founding fathers of those institutions, they are foresight that we need technology. We need agricultural technology. That's why they established. But the students are not forthcoming. Students are not there. Where is the problem? Because we have a lot of, you know, the, the thing is that, you know, we have a lot of people, you know, a lot of graduates, whether in humanities, whether in, in sciences and technology, whether in engineering, a lot of that. A lot of them on the streets with doing nothing, you know. And so maybe over, th over time, uh, a lot of people have lost interest in, you know, education, in, in school, you know, getting, because it's more like now the focus is more on just getting certificates and all of that. Not many people are really talking about, you know, what can I do with what my do hands, like skills and all of mm. that. So where is the root of that? That's what I say. I say it's a gradual thing. It was gradual. I was with somebody one day. He said he read industrial chemistry. Industrial chemistry in those days, with the hope that when he graduates, he'll be working in all these either detergent companies, either food companies, and so on and so forth. Where are they again? He has to turn to GIS and be doing mapping for MTN. Mapping of houses for MTN. Where he was trained, where he was interested, there's no job for it. There's no place he can walk. So what I'm saying in essence is that it is a gradual process. We are running to humanities, to management. And people in the management who graduated, they don't get job. Those in the science and technology, we are closing them gradually. Even the training we are giving to those we are producing, are they up to standard? Somebody call himself a BSc or MSc order in mechanical engineering. He doesn't know anything about the part of a vehicle. He says it's his theory. So is that a problem of infrastructural deficit that we have in Nigeria or lack of you know, investments in coming into Nigeria? Not, in, not, in, not investment per se. It's our, our lacadastica attitude. Our main focus in Nigeria is money. We are not looking for name. Everybody is looking for a short place where to get money. I was reading something somewhere the other time. They said somebody went to Harvard. He did his first degree, second degree in something electrical, NEPA, electricity, and so on and so forth. And before 30 years, he became a PhD holder. They are now celebrating him. I'm carrying him from there and put him to be managing our electricity. No experience now. He only has the certificate. He's not, he can't be a policy maker at that age. But those are the things we are doing in Nigeria. How can you make policy? You're supposed to be in the field to practice what you have learned. Before you get to a stage and become a board member. Somebody wants to use a PhD to become a board member with making policy. So it's, it's, a lot of things are wrong with us. In terms of practical, most of our products, most of our products cannot, cannot perform. I'm okay. sorry, not only in engineering and science. 
Some people graduated with a, with a degree or second degree in education. They can't teach. And when you have a degree so, in education... So, so, so you, are, you, you know, by what you are saying now, it's looking more like, you know, by extension, yeah. the problem is not just about government funding. It's yeah. not. It looks like there is some kind of societal orientation problem Definitely. here that we are dealing with. Definitely. How can we change that? No, we have to... The way we can change it, because it's becoming complex every day. Even my student, when they ask me the question, I would say the future is too bleak. How do we solve it? As you are solving one. Because, you know, you have to think about, you know, the thinking. You know, usually before, what we know is that uh, parents, for instance, when they are making career choices for their children, they will say, oh, okay, professional courses, uh, engineering, mm. you know, law, medicine, mm -hmm. and all that. The, you know, so there's kind of a restriction around all of those areas. Now we are all learning that all of those places are now filled up everywhere, <laughs> you know, you turn to. Mm -hmm. So how can we expand, you know, our system in such a way that it can accommodate more people in several other fields, you know, biological scientists on one hand, you know, today Industrial we are talking chemists. about, exactly, today we are talking about COVID-19 and Nigeria is talking about how can we get vaccine for, vac uh, you know, for this. And we've had a, a lot of research is ongoing, but I mean, we all know that there's very little uh, chances of eventually, you know, coming up with any kind of vaccine. I'm we so depend heavily on, you know, other European countries and, and Western countries and all that. I'm sorry to say, our politicians since 1999, They've not helped us much. Because as if they politicize every angle of life. Recently, before I do not believe that employment are sold in Nigeria. Appointment are sold. Somebody wants to join police to sacrifice his life. Somebody wants to join military to sacrifice his life. And then you ask him to bring money before he can join. It doesn't make sense. It was not like this before. That's why I used the word, I say I'm sorry, between 1999 and now, it's becoming worse. Competent people want to serve Nigeria in different fields of life. But they are not capable of buying employment, for, uh, buying appointments. They cannot perform. I didn't mean we are able to recruit our method of recruitment, not only in leadership, even in professionals. Some people don't want anything. They like teaching. They want to teach. So how is that you know, affecting our education? our educational sector, the tertiary institutions, for instance. It's affecting, you know. because everybody's bringing certificates in, in sciences and colors. You go to Niger, maybe Mariam Abacha University, within two years you came back with a, with a certificate. You go to Bini, maybe this guy's uh, Azari Dukubo's university in Bini, you come with a certificate within, even that was, you know, the social media. They say if you go to Bini six months, they will give you a certificate, a degree. And you bring it to Nigeria, they will reckon with it and promote you. And you see, we come. These universities are okay. I mean, are, are, are illegal, 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 illegal. They will bring list. But yes, some people bring the certificate and get employment with it, and so on and so forth. It's affecting us. What I'm trying to say is that our problem in Nigeria is multifaceted. We have to start from. We cannot even know. We concentrate much on politics, on power. Like I do tell my students, maybe as a professor now. The little I'm getting, I'm managing. And somebody says, he's praying for me so that I get appointment as a commissioner. I said, the commissioner that one governor with a school start will be controlling, you will not call for executive council meeting. If you call for it, just briefing. How will my brain be used? As a professor, mm. you're supposed to tap me and say, OK, this is what is here. This is what we want to do. Let's debate. Let's discuss it. So what we'll are the practical the steps that we, can, we, we must take to bridge that gap you know, between research and development, between our institutions and the industries? How can we bridge that gap? I'm sorry. Most of our universities have no in required up-to-date equipment to even teach so that they can go out. Most of what is, we are teaching in the university are more of theory than practical. They cannot produce much. Unless we go back to the drawing table where every one of us had done wrong, where we have found one thing, then let's come back and start all over. If not, we are going, we are, we are going to, <laughs> maybe we're not going to the ditch. 
Because the way we are doing, we are frustrating ourselves. And people are happy that it's happening like that. Uh, two years to the, to the next election, people have been preparing, pasting posters. I want to be governor. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be president. We neglected our professions. It's a, unless we go back, that intellectual property is very, very important to develop a nation. I do say it on my Facebook page the other time, that in the Second Republic, at least we're a bit, if you don't know what happened in the First Republic, at least we knew what happened in the Second Republic. When you're talking of two parties then that are prominent, that's Unity Party of Nigeria, EPN, and NPN, National Party of Nigeria. They have what we call a kind of strong research body. Let uh, 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 Dr. Taru Ubauti is the one that is heading that of NPN. He came from Harvard or Oxford, a sociologist with a PhD. He's the one carrying out research. How can we have private sector, you know, sponsor researchers? They cannot, when they are seen, you know. You have, to, you have to showcase your product before they can sponsor you. Ted Fund have been doing a lot of uh, sponsoring of research. Even some universities have been sponsoring research. There was a time, Ted Fund said he sent some people to go and do workshop or, or seminar or conferences, offers. Some of us collected money, forged receipt, sat down in our place, used the money to buy car or build house. Is that the fault of government? We are not even eager to showcase our name. We lobby, they put our name on the research grant. Go to Malaysia or go to I mean, uh, 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 America, go and do some workshop, conference. You sat down in your house. You could up with it. You spend the money to buy a car, or to marry, or build a house. There was a time they passed a circular. They said, those of you have gone to conferences so, so, so time abroad. Please come and retire. They are even forcing people to retire. When you're supposed to so, come so, and write a report. So when we research, <laughs> I mean, when we release <laughs> funds for such things, <laughs> is there a way of tracking? Is there a way of knowing that this person has been penciled for this, and he has gone for this and that and that. Is there a way of tracking? How do we That's monitor That's tracking they are writing to these universities. Those of you have gone on outside conference training workshop, student social period, come and retire. Me, I do ask the question. Nigeria should not be a country of enforcement every time. That must be best practices. As a professor, if you get to a certain stage, you must have impeccable character. Because you're a role model. Even a senior lecturer, a PhD holder, you're a role model. Some people are looking at you. They want to copy your attitude. Fallen truly, you must be able to retire without tracking. And now they are tracking after three years, asking you to come and retire. That you have not even retired. Not to talk of telling us what you gained there. It must be the first thing that you write a report. You want to be proud of yourself. And even make it a seminar in the class for your students. And tell them the story of what you experienced so that they can gain from there and be eager. We are not ready to even be a role model to anybody. Everybody just looking at, I want to go for seminar, I want to go for conference abroad, I know the Esther code, the money is big in dollar. They will convert it to Naira and make money. That's all. That's the end of our research. Everybody is after money. Yeah. Everybody is after money. <laughs> Most of our industries in Nigeria will not sink money into us because they know the product. All right, now, do you think that the recruitment process of, you know, it's, it's a part of the problem. The recruitment process of lecturers, you know, and all of that. Do you see that as a huge problem? It is, it is it, part of it, to be frank. How many universities or colleges of education or polytechnic in the last three years advertised? The rule, the rule of civil service, public service, advertise for six weeks. Let application come. Select, call for interview. Select the best out of them. Even if we spread it to fulfill federal character or quota system. But let them be interview. Those who come from each of the states, let them compete. Most of the employment is done today on the ground. They will bring a poem letter to you in the house and say you are employed. The same thing is affecting our public service. As a public administrator, you recruit. You can't recruit everybody, a chemist, to be an administrator. Somebody in higher education is an administrator. There must be a training who to be an administrator. Even some administrator cannot even mean it. Initials file. They don't even know the language of filing, of, of minuting. And it has its own language. 
In the university, there's a workshop. They call it a workshop in public administration. Mm. Everybody they teach you how to mean it on file. If you go to some institutions today, even in public, you will see that some files are empty at the back. And it's supposed to be initials. So, I, come to this, I mean, so. by this discussion, what, we, what is clear is that even yeah. if government is to grant all of the demands of ASU today, the problem of the Nigeria's tertiary institutions will still be there. It may. At least a certain percentage will still be there. It will not change it. So what are some of the attitudinal change that you, I mean, you will advocate for uh, in our tertiary institutions by way of rounding up? I want uh, ASU. The way, you know, ASU, they set up a committee on this uh, Professor Pantami's uh, something, uh, certificate, I mean a professorship at uh, FUTU. The report came, they exonerated him. Also still take it up and say, no, they discarded those things. Administratively, it's not done. The same thing, there are some points in the university system that are supposed to put as part of the demand. It's not only to be looking at government alone. Hasu has a strong position or has a strong instrument to even check the happiness in the universities. Hasu did, if our Hasu, Hasu has a lot of, if our Hasu, I will say, as your executive, I mean, I'm an Hasu man, as your executive, you will ask the question, what is the payroll before IPPIs? What is it now? And expose those universities who have over bloated the system. That as you are fighting outsiders, you are fighting yourself as well. Exactly, but we are not seeing that happen. We are not. And they are rad. They have overbloated it. And I ask the question. So if you if ASU go to ask ASU of the chapters, they will, ask, they, will, they will answer. How many people were employed? They will tell you. They will ask the department, do they do interview? Do they advertise? Hmm. They will tell. All those same points should be put by ASU. ASU has a moral uh, 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 something. Uh, uh, upliftment, obligation. Uh, obligation, sorry, on what is happening in the university. Government alone cannot do because government, some people go in government, they are not in comfort with what is happening in the university. Hasu is more closer to the day to day happening. And they're supposed to be talking about those who rot. That's how we can change the system. Mm. We should fight ourselves. You can't be fighting every, somebody else every, every time. We should ask ourselves the question. Now, am I doing the right thing too? Hmm. Is the system I'm championing doing the right thing? And what is the money coming into the university? Even the third fund you are talking about, some projects are abandoned. They were not. I, saw, I know one university, I will not mention them. Some projects are abandoned for five years. Another five chancellor came. He said, no, no, that does not concern him. He's starting his own project. Hmm. All right, well, thank you so much uh, for coming on the program. Uh, we appreciate your thoughts uh, here on issues. It's my pleasure. Well, we've been speaking with Professor Kamal Bello from the National Open University, talking about alternative funding for our tertiary institutions in Nigeria. With that, we've come to the end of the program. Connect with us via our social media platforms. And also, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch us live. I am Aibu Thank you for watching. Bye for now.